do you think that probably uh, this is one of the reasons why retail investors did not come in because they really thought that the valuation was high and probably is that proved in some sense now? If you look at the volume, they are so thin and I would always be a little surprised that the retail investors would be in a better position to discover a price than what you call the qualified institutional buyer. I thought they are called qualified buyers because they know b better how to discover a price. All right. Now that you have raised 4,170 crore rupees, uh, can you take us through the usage of the proceeds once again and also the timeline in which you are looking at using them? Well, about 23% of that is offer for sale. So it would be 3,000 something which would come to us. <clears throat> That's mainly for the capex over the next two, two and a quarter years. So now that you've listed, can you give us a sense of what kind of growth are you expecting for this financial year as well as next year? And uh, where can we see the tenancy ratio settling down at the next couple of years? <clears throat> Look, as a matter of principle, we don't give guidance. We wouldn't be giving guidance for this company as well. <clears throat> but uh, you have the research reports. We say that the tenancy for the industry should go up from 1.7 to 2.46 over five years. Mm -hmm. We are already at 1.9. So the attempt would be to keep increasing it as far as you can and as quickly as you can. Mr. Gupta, so please I request you to look at oh. the viewers so some and talk. Are that, so some analysts are not very bullish about the tenancy issue aspect because they cite that a lot of telecos such as uh, uh, Arcom and uh, Tata Tele, they have their own uh, 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 tar division, so that is likely to impact. So how do you see that impacting? They have always leader? had their tar divisions, but our uh, tenancies have been going up. In fact, Tata's Reliance Communication, everybody is a tenant on our tar. So it's not that because they have a tar company, they won't come to our but they, they are all tenants on our But keeping company. in mind that the growth has actually slowed down and has not picked up as much, at least for 3G and or of course 4G also, oh. do you see the tenancy target that even uh, Analyst Mason has said uh, will be achieved in a longer time than what was expected? Of? I think 3G, contrary to popular belief, uh, is uh, picking up very well. <clears throat> Wherever we are taking 3G, we are getting a very good response. And these things do need some momentum, they take some time. It's just been one year since we really started rolling it out, so it'll take some time. But it's picking up very well. If you look at the data traffic, it's gone up by 60% in the last six months. Now that's not a small growth, it's a huge growth. So I have no doubt that um, the 3G rollout will pick up. That would mean more tenancies, or should mean more tenancies. 4G may be a little away. I think the ecosystem has to develop. But 3G definitely, I don't have any doubt that the rollouts will be quick here and after. So there's an e-com which is going to take place next week to decide further on the auction procedure. Can you just tell us what are your expectations for 2013 for the telecom industry? How do you see it? Like? Oh, will it be a better year? <coughs> well, I won't uh, talk about the auctions and all. I think that is what the government has to do, what it has to do. But I do believe that 2013 should be a better year for telecom. For two, three reasons. One, you have seen the cost coming down especially the uh, acquisition cost, the sales and distribution cost, that's already started happening. I have no doubt that the realized rates will go up, not, not you know, shoot, but they will start climbing up. So I think it will be a better year. The data services will get, uh, you know, rolled out deeper into the country. That will bring additional revenues to the telecom companies. So third, certainly I have better hope Will an increase in tariff also? Shifting focus to Intratel uh, per se, uh, we'll be curious to know about uh, your inorganic uh, growth plans as well. So there is no plan, but definitely we would look at uh, any opportunity which comes our way. But there is nothing on the horizon at this point of time. And what is the plan of action for Indastars in which you hold over 40% stake? Now what will happen? Well, Indus is a separate company with a separate management. <clears throat> so that will continue. It will uh, continue to grow very strongly. Uh, its legal process of merger is going on. So at this point of time, it's a status quo. And you also made an interesting point in your speech that uh, after Bharti Infratel listings, it could prompt other tar companies also to come and test the market. Is Indus also lined up next? Indus is not lined up at this point of time, but it's not prohibited from going and listing at some point of time. But I don't know when. But there are other tower companies, there's Viom, uh, there's Reliance uh, Infratel and others. So I think it will be good to have some company on this stock exchange. Uh, with other tower companies. To the, do you, if you relook, re do you think that you are confident about the pricing? It's not my confidence. After all, the qualified institutional buyers oversubscribed it almost three times. So I, I'm looking at their confidence. 
So I, I believe the pricing was absolutely correct. And if you see, we actually reduced it by 10 rupees in the end. Our book was at 230. There are some concerns with respect to overcapacity in the sector. Uh, and uh, from what we could understand, funds will be employed to, uh, uh, to install more tasks. How do you see that uh, issue panning out in terms of overcapacity and uh, power? I don't sector? think there is any overcapacity. But if there was overcapacity, there would not be increase in tenancies and uh, new TARs coming up. You know, it's it's not that these TARs are movable. They don't have wheels. So if the TAR is somewhere and I have another place, so it's not necessarily that we compete on each TAR. All right. Finally, would like to know what are your private equity investors telling you at this point? Of course, after this issue, they have part exited. What is the kind of exit route you are providing them in future and what kind of returns they could be expecting on now with what confidence can you really tell them that they will be The good thing them? of listing is that the exit route is very clear now. They have a one year lock in after that obviously they are all free to sell. And I don't have to determine what returns they can get, the market has to determine, our performance will have to determine. All I can do and say to my private equity investors is that the good work which our teams have been doing. I have absolutely no doubt that will continue and ultimately it is the performance of the company which would speak on the stock market.